Hello everyone, and welcome to the second part in our look at the new ALC42 locomotives that are currently being assembled by Siemens Mobility for the Amtrak Long Distance Trains. Have you ever wondered what the assembly process is like for new locomotive construction? Well in this video we are going to return to the Siemens Mobility Rail Equipment Manufacturing Plant located on the south side of Sacramento to see how the ALC42 locomotives are built. Armin Kick of Siemens Mobility rejoins us to discuss this process and provide additional background information about the locomotives and how they are assembled. The Siemens Mobility Rolling Stock facility here in Sacramento is on 60 acres. It was established in 1991 and we currently employ about 2,000 employees. Here at the uh, Siemens Mobility Rail Manufacturing Plant, we are really proud of being part of a skilled, dedicated, and motivated workforce that can build such uh, fabulous equipment. People make all the difference. This is a people business, and we are really excited about being able to build sophisticated product and to do it together with a group of people that is all focused on a quality end product. Our facility here in Sacramento is powered by a two megawatt solar facility. So that is really good for sustainability and it helps us to put the power of the sun into the gray energy that's in the product when it is being built. Here at the Siemens Mobility Rolling Stock Manufacturing Plant in Sacramento, we currently build light rail vehicles, passenger cars, locomotives, and we also offer train sets. That's an end-to-end -end solution where we deliver the entire consist for a train set. We have supplied 20 cities in North America with light rail vehicles. For locomotives, we have two customers that have purchased our electric locomotives, and we have 10 customers that have bought these electric locomotives. Before a locomotive can be built, it must be designed. The Charger is a complex locomotive that took thorough research and development over a several year period. So the Charger is a, a specific North American locomotive design, but it is based on our experience from Europe, from the Vectron locomotives, and also from the ACS 64 electric locomotives that are run in the Northeast Corridor. Some of the challenges uh, in coming up with a new locomotive design are based in the need to uh, incorporate as many of the needs of the future users of this locomotive. Uh, in this context, we built this locomotive to the Priya specification, which was developed uh, between multiple users and participants in the process to try to encapsulate as many of the requirements in the North American market. Uh, and so the design process, really the big challenge was to make sure that you have a future-proof design that could work for as many customers as possible with as few changes as necessary. A diesel electric locomotive uh, works as follows. You have a prime mover, an engine, and an alternator connected to that. Uh, you can actually see that behind me. And that uh, produces the electricity. Uh, downstream from that point, it is actually an electric locomotive, so with traction converters, and then uh, driven electric motors uh, that run this locomotive. From the time of an order to delivery, that is a, an approximately 24 to 36 month uh, period. It depends on whether it's a rebuild with no engineering changes or whether there's changes to consider. We also have to consider capacities and, and other orders, but the approximate time frame is 24 to 36 months. Following the design phase and signing of construction contracts, all necessary parts for locomotive assembly are ordered from numerous suppliers all over the United States. The first step in the manufacturing process is the basic locomotive frame and fuel tank construction. This first portion is fabricated upside down, the very beginnings of a new locomotive. Siemens has built up a supplier network in the United States uh, for these locomotives and all product we built here in Sacramento that uh, supply base has grown over the years uh, and uh, we are very proud of the fact that we can buy a lot of the parts for this locomotive here domestically. Following frame assembly, the locomotive cab and sidewalls are added creating the basic locomotive car body. Other components are also fabricated in this building such as the locomotive nose pieces which will be added much later in the assembly process. We build locomotives from the ground up here in Sacramento. That means we weld the car body. We have a, a large group of people 
that is engaged in uh, welding the, the car shells for these locomotives. We have training programs uh, to uh, ensure that people have the skills to do that work. We work with local colleges uh, to bring uh, people in that are interested in welding. We educate them and we uh, enable them to build on very sophisticated uh, product. While basic locomotive shell assembly occurs, the locomotive trucks, or bogies, are constructed. This work includes fabricating the truck frame, installing wheel assemblies, traction motors, and other components. On the charger, we use AC traction motors. Uh, AC traction motors have certain benefits. They are lower in maintenance compared to DC traction motors. Uh, they're also highly reliable and have very good performance. And the industry has largely shifted to AC uh, traction systems uh, overall. Once the locomotive shell assembly is completed, it is sent to the paint shop where the shell is first sanded down and then painted. Shells are moved around the plant on these large motorized vehicles. Following paint work, the locomotive shells are taken to another building for additional finishing and inspection work. The approximate time for production of a locomotive is uh, eight to nine months. Uh, it breaks down into uh, different production steps. So we built the car shells here, then we build electrical sub-assemblies, and then we do the final assembly, which you can see behind me. Um, the overall process takes around eight to nine months, but it is staggered into different phases. And there's also some buffers in between to make up for things that go faster and slower. And uh, in final assembly, as an example, we have approximately eight locomotives in that production uh, stage at any one time. While work on the shell continues, many of the electrical components are put together in the electrical sub-assembly building. This includes everything from locomotive control stands to electrical racks and other computer systems such as the diesel emissions control system. Modern locomotives are very complex in terms of onboard electronics, so while this step in the manufacturing process may seem smaller in scale than car body assembly, it is nonetheless critically important in the process of building a properly functioning locomotive. Individual components will be tested before installation into the locomotive shell. There's 26 miles of wires and cables on a charger locomotive. All of that has to come from somewhere. So we do the electrical sub-assemblies here in a separate building where we have people working on electrical racks, um, consoles, uh, wire trays, and they build all of the electrical components and the wiring that's needed to uh, power this locomotive. That's a very sophisticated part of the locomotive build. Following the painting and simultaneous separate electrical component assembly, the shell is then moved into the large, final assembly building. It is here where all the various components that have been worked on for the last several months all come together to make a completed railway locomotive. This includes the installation of all electronic systems and wires, the locomotive prime mover, diesel exhaust fluid tank, various roof panels, and completed trucks and traction motors. The nose piece of the locomotive is also installed here along with the side see-through panels. The Charger uses a QSK-95 Cummins engine uh, coupled with a uh, sophisticated after-treatment system. Um, that works very well for passenger uh, locomotives, so it's a, it's a high-revving engine um, design. The see-through grills that you see on the Charger uh, are used for air to be pulled in to cool down the locomotive uh, through the engine coolant unit. With assembly complete, the locomotive is moved over to the test track and test shed building for more inspections and then some test runs. This process can take several weeks while all systems are gone over thoroughly. During this period, any final decal and paint work that needs to be done is completed. Here is Locomotive 301, which is set to become one of Amtrak's 50th anniversary locomotives. As you can see, the locomotive has received a solid coat of gloss black paint, but has yet to have any additional markings applied. After rigorous testing and inspection, the locomotive is finally complete and ready for shipment. Once a locomotive is fully assembled, it goes out to our uh, test department, uh, and they test the locomotive uh, for all the functionalities and it gets operated on our test track. After that is done, uh, the locomotives ship to the end customers and we do the commissioning on the customer's uh, property. 
And that is also very important because some of the aspects can only be tested against the installed signaling systems and other uh, aspects that we need to uh, recognize. So that testing then occurs before a locomotive can go into revenue service at the customer sites and on their lines. Once locomotives are in revenue service, Siemens continues to monitor the units to make sure everything is working properly. Now, we monitor around 800 data points continuously on this locomotive and that really helps Amtrak by being able to see this information in real time, what is going on on each one of these locomotives. It helps with preparations for maintenance, uh, troubleshooting, helping the engineers if they have issues. Uh, and that's a real uh, new development that is uh, making product better. There is a lot of very interesting aspects involved in manufacturing. Uh, when people get a chance to tour this facility, they always come away with amazement on how many different aspects have to be done in order to put a sophisticated rail product together. And that is what's really fun at this facility. There's a lot of dedication and skill required and a lot of experience needed to be able to build uh, such product. And that's it. That's how you build a locomotive start to finish. Of course, this was a very simplified version and there is so much more detail you could go into in terms of the construction of each individual component, but I hope this gives you at least a rough idea of how these complex machines are put together. Once again, a big thank you to Siemens Mobility and Amtrak for giving me the opportunity to share with you the manufacturing process for these new ALC42 locomotives, as well as Arm & Kick for the interview. As always, if you have any questions or comments for me, leave those down in the comments section below. For regular video upload notifications, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to receive all notifications. There's even more train and railroad themed content on my other social media pages, and remember to check back soon for part 3 of our first look at the ALC 42 as we follow Locomotive 300 on its trek over the Sierra Nevada mountains. I'll be back next Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time for an all new railroading adventure right here on the YouTube channel. That's it for now. Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching.